breath in, weight spreading through the feet. And just create your intention for your practice, just, you know, a focal point for where we're going, what we're creating, what we want to show up as, what we want to bring, what we want to offer, what we want to experience. Or maybe there's someone or something that you want to dedicate the energy of your practice to. Whatever it is, it's a full moon, so whatever we do, it's going to be bigger because of that big, fat moon. So inhaling through the nose, exhale, stepping the feet apart. And I'm just going to, I'm not going to jump, I'm just going to jiggle here tonight. Just shake off. If you want to jump, you can totally jump. Just shake a little bit and just to get anything that's stuck loose. And then gently hold. And then we'll cross our hands, and I think we do the full round tapping tonight. So here, up into the kidney 27. And then to the spleen 21, right at the ribs. And then let's place one hand on the navel, the other above and below the lips, and rub. And just linking up conception governing vessels. And then gently just hold those three points. shoulders, the sides of the neck, and the base of the skull. I wonder if this moon is the, why I got this headache. No. Kristen, any headaches? You yeah, okay? Yeah. Um, no, I haven't since I've been here, but not right now. Okay. 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 Let's get into the armpit. Okay, way high 
around the back. I think we're going to do three full rounds tonight just so we can get everything running. Down the back of the leg to the back of the knee. And then all the way up the insides of the legs to the groin. These groin taps can really be good if you've been in a seated posture for a long time. It's really breaking up that stagnation. And then round two, clap pull. Armpit. Elbow crease. Up the back of the arm. And to the other side. Down your arm. Up the back. To the shoulder, really pounding on that pet rock area. And then way up high on the back. <clears throat> Down the back of the leg. You know, because there's just been so much hoopla around here with this Navaratri now that it's over. Okay, the day it ended, they started talking about Diwali, which is the next one. Sure. I mean, like almost like the day, the day after. It's just like you start seeing things like, "Well, don't forget to stock up on your Diwali needs." So then, you know, the full moon that just kind of slipped through the cracks for me here. <laughs> up the back of the arm to the shoulder. Okay, last round. I hope you can feel this. I can feel it already. It's amazing how much you can just do on your own, you know. Really special attention on that elbow crease. And then up the back of the arm. To that shoulder. High on the back. And then all the way down the back of the leg. Up the inside to the groin. And then smooth around. So just start to separate your feet. And really just massaging around those belt meridians. This is it. Up the front, down the sides, up the back. So it's kind of making a figure eight with our hands, just swirling it around. And hug and hold, holding the tree. Leaning back on the tail. And feeling a lot of vibration. And opening our channels so we can drink in that moon, moon energy. And gravitational energy. Great, inhale, reach up, exhale, smooth it down. And then just, 
this move is to open up this pericardium point, palm of the hand. This really wakes up the hands, wakes up the chi flow. And healers and martial art fighters use this point to project chi. But we can use it to heal ourselves. So let's just rub our hands now. And then this go right to the kidney and rub. And then just hold and feel that sparkly energy go right into the kidney. As we breathe. And then let's just take it up to the face. The Chi masters, including the Montauk Chi, always talks about the people I've studied with talk about chi being the best cosmetic. We're going to bring the chi to our face. And then we'll just do a few taps around the head if you don't have a bun in the way. And hold and pause. Closing your eyes and tuning into the vibration through your body. Inhale and exhale. And we'll knock on the door of life. So when, when you do or when we do start feeling that chi flow, that vibratory energy, it makes it easy to kind of tune the mind out easier. And so keeping the chest lifted, try not to slouch while you're doing this. Looks good, Kristen. digestive move. My one? Yeah. And then shoulders nest, lung one, and main net. Keep going. Nothing new here. And then increase the twist by looking over the shoulder. We've gotten lazy about that, or at least I have. Because as soon as you look over the shoulder to the wall behind you, you feel a lot more up through your waist.
That's a really good thing about the Qigong is even if you did cheat and you have a little bit of food in your tummy, you can still get away with the Qigong mm -hmm. pretty easily. And it just, it helps us digest too. Tuck, get a nice stretch the top of the foot and the ankle and begin our circle. And try to keep the rest of your body lifted up tall. And take it the other way. Stretch the toes the other way. Uh, and then the other foot. So big stretch, top of the foot. This stretch is really important because it's counter, it's a counterbalancing that foot flexion position that we're in all the time when we're standing. Maybe some floor stretches if we have time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's full moon legal. Mm -hmm. Great, and then go the other way. And hopefully, you know, we've been doing this for a while. Maybe you're feeling your neck is loosening up a little. If you have less crunches in your neck, maybe getting more range in your rotation. Last one. Oh, 
holiday, you know? It's like, it's not, it's not a mundane day, it's a special day. So do a special practice. And then switch everything, including the wrists. Close your eyes if you want and see how big you can make your hip circles. our knees together. And not to raise. And 
and let's slow it down one notch. However fast your dragon is going, let's slow it down one notch. A little slow motion dragon. Last one this side. Up to the top, inhale. Pause. We could experiment, if not now, sometime we can experiment with doing like an ultra slow motion dragon. Like, can you imagine if it, we took five minutes to do one dragon? Uh, that would be like a meditation, actually. But I think we'll take a little bit more moderate speed for now. Sounds like something fun to play with sometime. you know, the tendency in our waking state consciousness, especially nowadays, oh my God, everyone does everything super fast. together wakes up right into that core if you do this move right it is it is okay it's a core workout right here I don't know if anyone else can feel it Mm -hmm. But it's just even more so when you really are pretty strict with yourself about, you know, not letting those legs open. Knees really want to separate. Just takes you right into your midline. on the side. Up to the top. Inhale. Nice big breath. And pause. Dragons are never hesitant to pause. They love pausing. They notice the world racing about them. And then they slowly begin to bring their hands down, separating feet. And holding up Aikini Mudra. Just below the navel, right at the navel. Softly tuning into the vibrations through your body. One hand on the belly, and here we go. So all of these we can keep our eyes closed if we want.
Really seeing if you can bring your whole body into it. Elbow cuts into the waist. You lean forward to take that arm out. See if, um, Robert, see if you can bring your torso into it a little bit more. It's like your head makes, yes, that's a little better. Your head makes a circle, your hips make a circle. Everything's circling. And that palm is up the whole time with that cup of tea. big you can make it. In your torso. Two more. Last one. We're doing all the teacups tonight, you guys. And switch. Black or green, don't spill it. Pull it in. Elbow comes into the waist, then the fingers. Elbow, fingers. tracing a spiral on the plane that is parallel to the floor. Then our whole body participates to make that spiral happen. Big chi flow. Great hands up. Doubles. And remember, this is the one where we make our spine into a wave. We have two cups of tea. One in each palm. It's a little bit harder to not spill. With the doubles. Drop the head as you bend the knees. Again, the whole body comes into this. These are full body moves. Whew. 
really leave. Uh oh, leave with a pinky. Two more, and we switch. Last one. Ooh, let's pause right here. We got our two teacups in our hands. And you probably feel your palms are buzzing now. Okay, now this is the one that's a little bit more wonky. We want to present the tea and then thumbs lead back and then palm stays up and that's the wave, like that. Thumbs, thumbs, and middle finger comes forward. Thumb into the head, thumb away from the body, yeps, and straight forward. You just kind of got to find it. You still have that feeling that you have a teacup in each hand. You're not spilling any tea on the floor. These moves to unwind the whole shoulder. And the way we're doing them, it's full body. You see how, if you close your eyes and do these slowly, how these become, it's just a moving meditation. The feeling of the flow becomes more obvious than anything else that your mind can come up with. Two more. Last one. Ooh. Now it's starting to get warm. Okay, so before we do the next one, which is a little bit more martial, um, we need to warm up our uh, knees and thighs. So let's bring our feet together. Keep that feeling, that buzzing chi feeling through your body, and then just softly circle the knees. That's it, heart forward, shoulders down the back. You want, don't want to bend over here. Whew. Go ahead, go the other way. Yeah, that last one definitely warmed me up. I don't know about anyone else. Uh -huh. Oof. And forward fold. Hanging forward. Forward bend. I think the t shirt's coming off. Just hang forward nice and easy. Holding the backs of the legs. Oh. 
really nice straight knees here. Just really enjoy that stretch. Great, palms together, we're gonna roll up. And we got one more teacups. This is the serving tea. Okay, so we wanna bring our feet fairly wide. And we got two cups of tea here. Okay, so this one, um, again, Robert, I'm not sure if you've done this over with me. First, we're just gonna start shifting our weight. Okay, because this is a weight shifting maneuver. Feeling loose, Kristen? Mm -hmm. I'm here. All right. Costume change. Costume change. Okay. Costume change. So what's going to happen is we're going to keep shifting our weight. Oh, we forgot the crane. So that pinky, again, these pinkies, pinky going to lead cuts forward and then that turns into a crane. It swirls up over the head and then the back hand comes around. And then the front hand turns into a crane. It flips and see how the, the front hand turns automatically into the back hand. The back hand automatically turns into the front hand. So it just, it never ends. <laughs> it's like once you start, it's like you can't get out. But the important part, this is called serving teacup, okay? So we've got the teacup in this hand that's coming around. Then I guess we just abandon the tea and we come to crane and then it comes over the head. You see? So I guess this one we officially get to spill the tea. And then you can experiment with nice wide legs because these martial arts guys, they take this very low. They take it super duper low. Lower than I'm going to ask any of us. So to you do. have your toes pointing out a little bit? Um, Kelly always has this They're detail. Open. Actually, you can have them open a little bit. Mine are actually both pointing straight forward, to be honest. But you could have them uh, slightly turned out. The important thing is the weight shift. Okay, mm -hmm. goes all the way. And again, full body. The arms are, are moving in opposition to each other. And so this is just one of those moves that it's, it just might look and feel like you're just kind of, you know, some Joe in the park waving their arms around. <laughs> <laughs> you know, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. We're just in the park waving our arms around until one day it's like, oh my god, I get it. And it clicks. That's how these the Qigong things are sometimes. Because people aren't used to moving um, holistically, like with their body all coordinated in one. So just the priority would be the weight shift and then that teacup coming around from the pinky. Then the crane, then the swirl. Two more. Last one. And big wide oh, pause. That was, that was intense. Very intense. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's Marshall. It's, it's from the Bagwazan. Okay. Inhale, and then we'll come right into Prasarita Padavatanasana. Bring the crown of the head down toward the floor, and just let that go. Just hang. Oh, it feels so good to just hang, doesn't it? Open up the backs of the knees. So, Robert, if you need to use bricks, please do. Here 
gonna become our new favorite, or one of our, I guess it's not new anymore. So we're gonna take three bends. I guess it's new that we're doing it with our legs wide. That's my new, latest trend. Now we're gonna roll it up, inhale, interlace the hands. Press the palms up, stretch the fingers, and then if you want, oh, all the way into the arch, any amount, and then take it right back forward. Press Rita. Three bends. And I want you to feel like really gummy on this, really gooey, like there's no um, sharp edges or corners. It's all connected. Yes, like goo. Oh, take it back. Oh, and then dive it forward. And then the taking it back, of course, is optional, only if that's in your comfort level. Each time you bend your legs, that gives you the reference point as to what is a straight leg. And so then when you get to the straight leg part, you really get to open the leg. Okay, we've rolled up, inhale, take it back. Oh. Swan dive. Next time we're gonna add on some side bends. Number three, roll it up, interlace the fingers, turn the palms up, and then big side bend. Bring it up, and side bend. And dive. Three bends. Roll it up. Oh, oh last one. Dive. Okay, so I think we're gonna get the chairs tonight since it's full moon, we're being really nice to ourselves, right? Nobody says right. Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> so let's walk our hands forward. Here's organic transition, okay? It's gonna be a tiny little jump. Boom, little jump. Tuck the toes and sit in Thai Angel. Interlace the fingers and stretch the palms up. Yep. So see if we can now, if maybe we feel empty enough, if some of our peanut butter is digested, so we can pull our navel back to the spine. Okay, inner shoulder down away from the ear. Yeah. So you can straighten the elbows all the way with the inner shoulder pulled down. The toes are nice and open. Isn't this getting easier? Remember how hard it was? Like, I don't know, a year ago or six months ago, it was harder, wasn't it? Internally rotate both hands. We'll take it, just grab the elbows. And look up. And then look forward. Great. Magic transition. Just turn to the side for some cats.
Tuck the toes into the dog. Now oh, here's a good one we haven't done in a while. Totally full moon legal. Okay. Stretch back in your dog. Nice and long. Press your thigh bones back. Drop your head. Press into the index finger knuckle. Okay, get it all really nicely solid. And then we're gonna take, I'm gonna take my outside hand. I'm gonna grab my inside ankle. Pariborta dog. And then I'm gonna look underneath my armpit. Breathing. One, two, three. Release and switch. Then they can't wait. It looks like the chair is going to wait uh, because I just got another idea. We got to bring Kristen up to speed on this one, you guys. Remember that, uh, remember that side plank variation we did last time? Yeah. Where we peeled over? Kristen, I don't think you've done it this way. I think we should try it. Okay. I don't think it'll be trouble. Right now we're doing extended cat wave. in here and then last one we're going to lift our knees for upward dog so we're going to tuck our toes lift the knees upward dog and a little rock if you want oh long in the anterior spine and then lift the hips if you want to tread your feet here you can so this is really a nice way to just kind of start to cultivate this back of this leg, you know. This whole, it's not just the hamstring, it's the whole back of the leg has to open. So here, when you tread your heels like this, you can do one leg at a time. Okay, so everybody come down for a second and watch. So, because Kristen, um, I don't think she's, that we, she's done this with us because I just introduced it last week. All we're going to do is just this little drill that's going to train us to get in Vasistasana. So, we're going to take this outside foot, and we're going to peel it over, and we're going to come down here. Remember? And then back to the uh -huh. And then we're just going to peel and we're going to sit down. And then back to dog. And then after we go back and forth, peel, 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 we're going to do three of these lifts. Okay? Three, and then we might try for the full Monty, and then up and over. Okay? I'm going to talk us through. Okay, so now we're just gonna do, we're just gonna peel, nice and easy, and then we'll get the chairs out. All right. You go, okay? Here we go. I'm gonna peel my outside foot first. Peel just up and over, and then lower my hip. Yes, and I can lower my hip all the way to the floor even. And then I'm gonna peel it back up. Go right back to dog. And then outside foot, peel up and over. I 
but just keep it going. So watch if you need to. Are you okay, Robert? Yeah, I'm going to sign off. Okay. All right, um, I'll see you next time then. Right. Okay. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 How are we doing? Yes. Okay, I think we're going to take a break before we do the sustains, okay? So the next time you come back to, to come into dog, okay, come all the way down into child pose. And then if you want to rotate your wrist, you can totally rotate your wrist here. Two, 
lift and right into that side plank vasistasana. Step feet or one foot in front of the other. Look how strong you guys are getting. One, two, three, up and over the top. Brilliant. Woo. Okay, this one we're going to be facing away from the camera. Okay, ready? So it's an outside foot, we'll peel. Outside foot peel, we turn away from the camera. We stretch up and we dip our hips down. One, only two. Two. After the second dip, we stack our feet or we have one foot in front of the other. We pull up with that top wrist. One, two, three. Up and over the top, dog pose. You guys are rock stars. And then bring it on down. Woo, let's just sit Vajrasana. And rotate the wrists. Amazing. I wonder if we scared Robert off with the bossy stasins. Or maybe he really had to go. Robert's like, I'll be signing off now, bud. Yeah, totally. Oh, All right. Anyway, it's okay. And let's just hold this lotus mudra for a second. It's just a really pretty mudra. Just closing your eyes. All right, okay, so here's the transition. Um, this is gonna be organic. We're gonna tuck our toes and just roll them back. Okay, um, what's it gonna be, Upa Vista? This is, it was a yeah. Palms up, and just a couple of gentle cuts, windmilling across, with a palm up. support yourself. Just really nice and easy. Great. And then hands come under the shoulders. Let's press up. And let's bring one leg in. The other leg stays in Upavista. And we'll do this side. And let's do three dynamic. And sustain on the last one. And three. Oh. So this is the reverse bending, which means we're twisting away from the leg. Now we can turn in a moment and do the regular forward bend over the leg, but we're starting with a harder one. So the navel is twisting away from the straight leg up toward the ceiling. And aiming to get that shoulder behind that knee. This is the one that Mr. Iyengar does this, his navel is turn facing the ceiling and he's lying back the back of his head on his knee yeah he's it's crazy he's really twisting this is called parigurta jana shishasana actually oh my god let's bring it up inhale 
That's a strong one to hold for 10 minutes. Okay, we'll, yeah, we'll square off the hips now. So we're kind of more in a Janu Shishasana uh, posture. And then we'll come forward, just a plain Jane forward bend over the front leg. Except we don't, we don't do anything plain Jane in here. Oh. And just rest. If you want to rest your head on something, such as a brick or a blanket, and you get to a point where you're just feeling that deliciousness in the back of that leg. Great. Inhale, coming up. Here's the counter pose. Really pretty move. We'll bring that foot parallel with the knee and this lift up. It's kind of a half, it's a modified Purvottanasana. Okay, because the full Purvottanasana is pretty hard. It's kind of hard. So we can get almost all the same benefits uh, with one leg bent, plus it counters that, that stretch. Okay, let's go ahead and switch. So first we'll do the hard one, Pariburta. So one way to get into this is my, this, my same arm as leg is going to reach forward. This is one of the tricks. It reaches forward and you try to really get that shoulder in place in front of the knee. And then you come over the top. That, with that hand forward, it kind of gives you some leverage to turn that navel up. Oh my God. And then if and when you feel like you're established in the, po a, a twi you're established in the twist, then you can bring the hand back to the foot. Oh. Really strongly opening that side body. and so now that leg is coming straight forward and then we'll inhale plain jane janar shashasana coming forward Amazing. Inhale, coming up. Place that foot. Okay, modified Purvottanasana lip. Take your head back if you want or leave it up, whatever you prefer. And lower down. 